Hi everyone, this is Shane Gibson with Rackgen, and this is a brief video on how to use the Postman tool to interact with the API of a digital rebar platform, uh, API v3 service. Uh, all of this work is available on GitHub as a collection that can be imported into Postman. There's actually three collections that are provided here, and they're outlined in the uh, README documentation. Uh, the primary three collections are an example of a setup for an environment. The entire uh, current DRP v242 uh, API spec version 3 information that can be imported just for exploratory purposes and the actual patterns that we'll be working with today. These patterns are available in this DRP patterns JSON and we're going to take this and import it into our Postman tool from Link. And so now we have this DRP patterns. Very briefly, this uh, API spec uh, is the full spec of API resources that are available in a DRP endpoint. Please note that these are generated automatically for each version. So if you have a newer version than version 2.4.2, uh, you will, or excuse me, 2.2.4, you will want to uh, upgrade the Swagger JSON, and you can get that from the Swagger UI on the endpoint itself. The swagger.json can be used to be imported into uh, Postman for you in that case. The endpoint that we're going to be working with today is this one here, and it has these two machines, Test Machine 01 and 02. Uh, Test Machine 01 is the one we're going to work with, and we are going to, we have a current profile that's on there, Test 1, and we're going to add and remove Test 2 profile using the JSON patch operations, which the digital rebar platform uses very extensively for safety controls in a multi-rider environment. Uh, we have the patterns imported and we also have an environment that I've imported and have set up. Uh, I'm using the environment variables with the RS endpoint, RS username, and RS password which will be used to authenticate to the DRP endpoint. Now note that these are the product defaults and these will uh, go away and change as soon as the video is over. Uh, and then these passwords are used to obtain a JWT token from the endpoint, and we will use that token as the auth mechanism back to the endpoint as we move through. Within the environment, we're going to use three variables, RSUUID. That's the uh, UUID that we use internally within RackN to represent the machine object that we are going to manipulate. I will show you how to obtain that. I'm going to also uh, reference the profile AA test 2 here, which is the profile that we're going to add and remove as an example. And then the workflow that we're going to add to the machine is called ESXi install. I've pre-set up these values uh, for convenience, but I'll show you how to grab them uh, using the uh, collection itself. To start with, uh, we have in the background here uh, our machine called test 01. And when we transition the workflow on it, we'll be able to see it kick over and start an uh, ESXi install process. Uh, one of the things that you'll want to note as I transition specifically for the profiles and the workflows is the API uh, will react, the portal will react to the changes in the API, I should say, on the machine object. And we'll see uh, feedback as the profiles are added or the workflow is changed. To start with, there's a, a series of basic uh, GET requests. These uh, objects are, uh, or these requests allow you to get the information from a DRP endpoint. Again, we're going to use uh, the DRP endpoint specified in our environment. Note that we don't have a token here. So we have an RS underscore token variable that will get filled out as soon as we obtain a token, and that's our valid token for authentication. That will be uh, brought in through the collection uh, level authorization. So the collection level authorization is set to bearer token. We will fill it in with the RS token, and we're using a pre-request script here to do the authentication uh, with the username password uh, to get the token from the endpoint. So this is how we interact with the DRP endpoint to get our token. Uh, we will also do a valid validity check to make sure this token is good. If it's still good and hasn't expired, uh, we won't try and get a new one because that's a slow operation. So that's where the auth is going to come in from uh, on that point. If we go ahead and just execute this, we're going to say send. Uh, this will get uh, a whole bunch of machine, well, not a whole bunch. There's only two machines on this uh, endpoint. 
For convenience, there is a test, uh, test results that are applied uh, here, and the test will pull out the name and the UUID to the uh, console. So if you don't have the console open, you can open the console from the very bottom left within Postman, and you'll have this open. And we can see that we have our two machines that came off uh, the host. This 855 UUID is the one that I pre-filled out, and that's the one we're going to use. If we know what specific machine we want to get, we can get just the object, the machine object for the machine itself. Uh, in this case, it's going to use the RSU UID, so you can change this variable to reference different machines if you wanted to get the individual machine object. And we can go ahead and send that, and we get the machine object. If we wanted to see the entire uh, payload of the machine, uh, we drop the slim uh, pram off of the URL query, and then you'll see we get the parameters here, uh, which there's a whole lot of information that's uh, contained in this payload in the parameter field on the machine. And the slim option allows us to get a smaller uh, payload back, which is much more efficient if we don't care about what's in the payload of the parameters. The other thing that we're going to work with is the workflow, and so we need to get the names of all of the workflows that are available. And so in this case, we're going to do a get operation on the workflows. Note, we're just making an API call on the workflows here. Again, I'm using a test to pull out the workflow names for the console. And we can see uh, in the console here uh, over on the left uh, the workflows. Specifically, we'll be looking for the ESXi install workflow is what we're going to uh, work with uh, in this instance. And similarly for profiles, we can do the, the get operation. Similarly, we have the test structure set up, and we can see that uh, all of the available profiles on the machine are iterated. The one that we're going to play with is AA test 2. The one that's already on the machine is AA test 1. All right, so that's how we get the information to figure out what we're going to do the, to the machine. Uh, I failed to show you uh, earlier, so when I did my first request, the pre-request script, uh, notice I didn't have a token, so it did the user pass authentication, got our token, and we see that the RS token field is filled out here in our environment. So that's been added to our environment for the subsequent calls that we've been making. We're going to move into uh, the, um, I'm actually going to move into the workflows first. Uh, and then show you the profiles manipulation first because the workflow is going to kick off something interesting in the background on the machine. Uh, basically, we're in a standard discover base uh, workflow state here, and the machine's standing by in a waiting state, uh, waiting for us to do something more or interesting or new to the machine. In this case, we're going to transition it to a VMware ESXi install, and to do that, uh, we're going to go through the JSON patch operation. If you don't know about JSON patch, I recommend you read up on it if you're going to interact with a DRP endpoint uh, because the JSON patch uh, process is a very important process for how we interact with uh, DRP endpoints. It provides us uh, safety guarantees when multiple people, APIs, CLIs, web portal, are trying to change an object. Basically, it works by use of a, a test and apply a set of patterns. So basically a uh, test to say, does this object or does this field contain these values that I expect? If they do, then let's change it to these values. So it's basically just a test and an operation to execute. Generally speaking, we, we do replaces or add or removes uh, in the JSON patch structure. To do that, we have to do multiple API uh, steps. Uh, within the Postman environment, we're going to rely heavily on this environment and variables. So what we're going to do is, as we go through each API flow, we're going to do uh, build up a variable reference here uh, for workflow RS workflow current, which defines the current workflow we're in so we can create that patch operation successfully. So if we go ahead and do our get current workflow, we send the request and we get a response back from the machine. Uh, and we should take a look at our environment. You see we have now RS Workflow Current, and it tells us we're in Discover Base. That's the current workflow that we're in. And if we look through this uh, machine object, we see that indeed the return JSON structure shows we're in the workflow. Just to be pedantic, we go back to the rack end portal, and we see that, yes, indeed, we're in Discover Base. 
So the next thing that we want to do in the patch operation is issue the patch. And a patch is done in the body of a response, uh, HTTP request rather. And in this case, it's pretty simple. It's JSON structure, and it, we just specify that we're going to do a test operation. We're going to use the JSON path workflow, uh, which is that uh, workflow field within the JSON machine object. And we're going to tell it that we expect the value to be this RS workflow current. Remember, we captured that. RS workflow current is discover base. So that's what we're going to fill in. Postman's going to fill in for us. Then we're going to tell it we want to replace the workflow path with our new workflow that we are defining. And again, going back to our environment, not to be pedantic, uh, we're going to do the ESXi install as the workflow that we're going to replace. And so, but first, uh, you need to know a little bit about RackN and Digital Rebar Platform and how it works. The workflow system is designed to survive uh, multiple reboots of a machine and understand the life cycle of a machine as it transitions between power on, BIOS post, uh, Pixie boot, uh, operating system installation, reboot, BIOS uh, inst uh, update, firmware updates, RAID configurations, reboot. It's designed to handle all of that stuff. It's also designed to react immediately if the machine is in a current good state to transition to a new workflow. So if we change the workflow now, it'll immediately kick the machine over. For purposes of the demonstration, we're going to stop the workflow runner uh, so that the machine doesn't kick immediately, just so we get a chance to see the operations happening, happening as we control them. Normally, you may not do this. You would just go ahead and say, do the workflow patch operation, and it'll go about its merry way and do the work. Uh, so what we're going to do now is set the workflow. So we send that request. If we saw the machine actually changed and it set the ESXi install and the first stage in the ESXi install to run is prep install. So we've transitioned the machine object to its new workflow. But since the runner isn't running, we're in a not runnable state. It's not going to do anything yet. To do that from DRP, or excuse me, from Postman, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do a get to get the current runnable state because patch operations are very pedantic, and we need to be very careful about the constructs that we're working with that they're right. Once again, we are doing the uh, manipulation in the background of the variables, the environment variables. So RS runnable current is set to false, and that's what we're going to use as part of that patch operation. So we go to the patch operation, and as soon as I kick this off, you should see the machine in the background uh, the, the black pause bar will turn to a green play bar, and it'll start executing. We'll also see the console of the machine uh, and immediately start a reboot and to start into the ESXi uh, kickstart weasel installer process. So let's go ahead and kick that off. And we see that it's uh, kicked off, the play, and all of a sudden a whole bunch of stuff is starting to happen. Uh, based on our in, uh, ESXi install workflow, we're going to install ESXi 670U2, and we see that the machine is indeed performing a reboot operation in the background, and it's going to go about its merry way uh, to start the ESXi install process. So that's uh, very quickly uh, how we just drove a machine through a workflow construct. And uh, you can, these are also set up in the collection so that you can run each of these folders with the postman's version of a workflow runner. And you can execute the runner. Uh, so in the patterns, go to workflows and set the environment to KVM0 and then run these four operations in sequence in one, one go. So we set up the collection that way specifically to make it easy for you to interact with a single uh, process like that if you want, instead of the step-by-step -step that we just did. Uh, we're going to back up a little bit to the profiles. Profiles is very much just like uh, workflows. This, the process is exactly the same. So uh, as you can see on this profiles list here, there's a single profile on the machine, uh, which is that AA uh, test one. And we're going to do the, the prep to get the current profiles. We're going to manipulate the uh, environment, so we'll see a RS profiles current and an RS profiles new being specified when we do this. And we do that and it executes the call. We look at our environment again. Here we go. Our RS 
uh, profiles current is in fact AA test one. And because we have the value of profile set to AA test two, it's now going to specify the replace operation to replace uh, with the new set of test one and test two as the profiles on the machine. And so when we execute that patch operation, if you watch the machine uh, profiles column, you'll see a new profile uh, tag appear. I believe I set the color orange. And, yeah, there we go. I set the color orange. So now we have uh, a AA test two profile. It's been added to the machine. Uh, this profile is empty. There's nothing in it. So it's just sort of a, a exercise construct to see what's happening uh, with the API as we drive the API. Similarly, we can go through the process of removing. So again, JSON patches pedantic. I'm being pedantic about that, aren't I? And so we need to do our first get to get the current profiles list. When we do that, we see that we go back to our RS profiles current. Our current ones have these two. And because we have the test two in the list of profiles to operate on, it's removed it from the list. And our patch operation will return us to this just test one iteration. And so we go to the remove operation. And again, if you watch the uh, web portal, you'll see that the orange one disappear. Boom, there it goes. That, in a nutshell, is the uh, Postman interaction with the digital rebar provision uh, uh, service and the API interactions. If there are any interesting patterns that you uh, would like to work on, if you're a Postman enthusiast, we would really encourage you to, to please uh, take a look at uh, what we started with the collection here. Uh, we're open to taking uh, pull requests uh, for, uh, through standard fork branch uh, and uh, submit process through GitHub to uh, enhance the capabilities of this and make it better. I've never really worked with Postman much. This is my first foray into the tool. And uh, so certainly happy to see more uh, capabilities through the Postman collection. Again, that was Shane Gibson with RackN. And uh, just a last thought, we can see that the machine's going through its install process here in the background. So we initiated the VMware ESXi install process through the Postman. Uh, so again, Shane Gibson, Rackend, thank you very much. Appreciate your time and have a wonderful day.